back with this 73 champ. Uh, oh my gosh, how many videos does a champ need? You know, it, it's a really simple circuit. And uh, the challenge is not fixing the champ. The challenge is fixing a vintage champ while doing the barest needed changes. So I didn't shotgun a bunch of stuff. Aside from the uh, um, electrolytic capacitors um, and the bias resistor on the output, everything else in the amp is still stock as much as I could leave it. Um, but at that point, there was, a, it's hard to describe, kind of a, a furry sound to things in the background, like on the edge of, of tearing paper, but not quite tearing paper, and a little bit lower in pitch and it's really hard to get a sense of across of what i mean because you know famously talking about music is like dancing about architecture well the same goes for sounds but anyway i went through the amp again because i wanted this to be just right and um, uh, i found a little bit more dc in various places on the board where it wasn't supposed to be i already knew that we had dc here at this islet so i moved the uh input resistors to the tube sockets, I'm sorry, to the input jacks off the board. And I pulled all these components out here, which is pretty much the entire preamp, and soaked everything with, with isopropyl and got all that old stuff out and cleaned it all up, and I rebuilt it. In the process, I reversed the orientation of these, these three coupling caps to have the outer foil at the B-plus side, as they were on the, you know, pre-67 amps pre-68 amps, um, and, uh, you know, I measured everything, and everything was good, but there's still, in the background, that kind of furry sound, um, and it uh, turned out to be the old treble cap, supposed to be a 250 pica farad, it actually measured 160, and that's a pretty big change in value, and when the value changes on something like that, um, other attributes can also change. It wasn't leaking DC, but it just wasn't sounding very good. And it's an old ceramic disc, and they are temperature dependent, and they are vibration dependent, and they have different capacitances at different frequencies. And it was just making the whole thing sound a little bit furry. And I know that will not communicate anything to anyone else. It just didn't sound right. So with a new class two ceramic. And for those who wanna know what a class two is, Google awaits. Here's with a Telecaster uh, and uh, treble at just over six and bass just under seven. That's, that's the riff there for you, RJ. Um, this is through my shop cab, which is a two by 12. And uh, the new speaker's here, and we'll test that out in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'm really pleased with the way the amp responds now. And I made sure that what I was, was hearing before wasn't a problem with vibration. I went through and I tapped and tugged on every wire, uh, and not hearing it through the uh, speaker unless I tap on the input grid. That's, you got to tap pretty hard to hear that. So the amp is really quiet. Should be uh, good in the cabinet. Not only is it no longer furry, but it has really nice note separation and clarity. The other change I made while I was in here was when I was testing it before uh, in the higher gain mode with a switch. Before I had fully disconnected the negative feedback, and I was getting a little bit of ghost noting, uh, which may be a cool thing for harmonica, but I thought it was a little bit over the top. So instead of fully disconnecting the negative feedback, I'm just changing the, the value of it. So there's a lot less, but it doesn't go away entirely. And the uh, output section uh, doesn't have the ghost noting. <laughs> So
So once uh, the owner gets a chance to play with this pot and find exactly how much of a mid and gain increase he likes, this thing will be ready to finish up. I'm going to put this back in the cabinet and we'll get the chance to really hear where it's at now with a new new speaker. So this is the new G8C from WGS, replacing that brief experiment with the G8A, which I did not care for in this champ. Uh, just had a huge upper mid-range emphasis and comparatively uh, much less low end. Now speakers uh, are a very subjective thing. I'm not saying that the G8 uh, a was bad. The G8A was bad. It wasn't this sound I was going for with this app. So there are speakers which are bad. There are speakers which just are poorly made. They don't hold up or the, uh, the seams come undone or too much doping or the voice coil ceases up. So there is a category of objectively bad speakers out there. Um, but there are also subjective choices. And one guy is going to love an EV and the next guy is gonna love a tone tubby, you know, and you can't say that they're right or wrong for liking that. That's pistachio versus chocolate versus vanilla. Um, for my tastes and the sounds I wanted this particular champ to do, this ceramic G8C uh, does the trick. I've had some good luck with some of the Jensen mods in the past for champs. Some of the Webers can be great choices. Um, since Ted Weber passed, I guess about five years ago, I've had some quality uh, issues with some Webers. I got some others that are great, uh, so I'm not slagging them. I just don't recommend them as often as I used to. Uh, but I'm really p pleased with the sound of this champ now. This is uh, with the uh, without the the switch and gauge that I put in here, which will partially bypass the tone stack and reduce the negative feedback. That's primarily for harp use, but we'll be showing that. So with a Strat. It's sounding quite good, in my opinion. Um, there is a bit of a, of a vibration that I hear in the room that may or may not be audible to the mic. It is uh, the chassis in the Super Reverb that this is sitting on vibrating because it is not uh, secured the cab to the chassis in the super reverb. So the whole thing is just kind of vibrating. I hear it in the room. I'm not sure if the mic's going to pick it up. Uh, let me switch to a Les Paul. We'll show how the amp responds without the gain switch. Then we'll flip the gain switch. And if everything is working the way I want, then we'll get the, the owner over here to try it with harp and guitar and make sure he likes it. So let's switch to the Les Paul. All right, same settings on the amp. So volumes at about eight. Uh, treble and bass are both at five and a half, so noon. So this is just kind of how the amp sounds. <laughs>
So it does that champ thing. And in the room, that vibration is getting really annoying at the higher gain stuff. But it seems to be the super reverb cabinet. I'll triple check that it's not the champ. This thing's got those stupid silver gl uh, metal glider feet uh, that fenders have. And uh, they wear unevenly and, you know, it's, they don't sit flush on the surface. On my personal fenders, I like to put rubber feet on them back when I had fenders. But, uh, you know, the glider is what they have and they, they introduce vibrational issues. So again, that was without the gain increased and the mids increase that's built into the amp. That's just by cranking it. Um, now here's the volume back at seven. Let's flip that switch. For right now, that is adjustable with this pot. And the owner can set that where he likes it, then I'll replace that pot with a fixed resistor. Flip that switch back. So it's not meant to be something that you do mid-song. It's not foot switchable, but it is an easy thing to reach around. So if the owner is using this on a gig and the first set he wants to do a bunch of harp tunes and have it set there, if on the next set he wants to use this for a, a cleaner guitar thing, it's there. And you know, if you're using a, a Les Paul, There's a little bit of a gronk that I hadn't heard before. So I need to find out what's going on with that. This has got a new 6V6 and a new 12VX7. It's possible that that Remaining Gronk is the old 5Y3. I don't happen to have one right now, but I will sort out what that is. Well, you'd think it'd be embarrassing to have something like do like that on, on what I was trying to do as a playing video. I am much happier when an app messes up like that uh, before it gets to the owner because I don't want it to sound good here and then do this for them at home. Huh, it does not like that C sharp at all. sounding great otherwise I will find what's causing that that's not the speaker I don't think I'm pretty sure that is uh, gonna be either an old resistor or uh, possibly that rectifier tube we will find out it did not do this on the bench when it was not being vibrated and it did not do it when I tapped on it with a chopstick as you might have seen previously in this video but I cannot if it's happening at say 257 hertz. I can't top 
uh, tap it with a chopstick 250 times a second. I'm, I'm good. I'm not that good. So uh, I have actually used electric, electric toothbrushes in amps like this to find what is uh, responding to different vibrations because I can take the handle of an electric toothbrush and it goes much faster than anything I can tap with a chopstick. But uh, that's for a more complicated amp. As simple as a champ is, I'll be able to find it and get that rid of that. Not done, are we? But, you know, all the other issues this amp have are gone, and now I just got to find what's causing that. That's not going to be that speaker. Um, but if I, you know, the issue with this kind of thing is if I test this with an external speaker, that problem will go away, which could lead people to think it's the speaker. No, it's the fact that there's a speaker connected to the box as this is in and the whole thing is vibrating when the speaker vibrates. You go to an external speaker and this doesn't vibrate or this doesn't vibrate the same to the same degree. And so the problem goes away. You think, ah, speaker, and you chase your tail that way. But uh, I'm going to go have another cup of coffee and then dive back into this thing. I'll get it. But I, I think uh, aside from that remaining nastiness, which bothers me, the amp is overall sounding great, and everything I've done has been getting along the path towards goodness.